Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. And today, we're discussing digital capabilities. Digital capabilities means the ability to use, understand, and learn digital software. This includes, for example, learning to use Microsoft Word effectively and efficiently to help you with your assignments, or being able to quickly make a great PowerPoint. But this also extends to learning to use new technologies to organize yourself or manage your time. Therefore, developing your digital capabilities at university will really help you to save time and to allow you to do the things that you want to do, but aren't sure how to do them. It really does unlock new doors. I found that whilst I was at university, learning these skills really, really helped me, and I'm sure they'll help you too. So to help me today to explore what digital capabilities are and how you can develop them, I am joined by Matthew Galuli. Matt works for the University of Derby as an Associate Lecturer in Media Production and is a Learning Technology Media Advisor. Matt is also a University of Derby graduate. Around a year ago, when I started to make podcasts and live streams, Matt taught me how to develop my digital skills to help me self-solve and to help me learn how to use the new complex software I was faced with. So I really am delighted to have him here today, and I'm sure you'll learn lots from him. Thank you for the compliments. So when we talk about digital capabilities, what am I talking about? All right, so generally I think digital capabilities is all around learning how to kind of interact with the world around you digitally. But essentially it's, are you digitally literate in the way that you can function in today's kind of world and society? So I think it's highly important in my perspective so it's just about like the ability to adapt to technology, learn new technology and apply skills that will help you across different technologies because they're similar in different in, in ways. Yeah, I'd say so. But yeah, it's like if you're just looking at the base package, especially that at university now, the base requirements are, you know, you're probably going to end up using Word to write your essays. You're probably going to be using um you know, Blackboard uh, or Udo or especially now um, in terms of collaborate um, virtual lectures and stuff. And it's just being able to kind of navigate those platforms with ease that Mm. makes you more digitally literate. And it's always good to kind of increase those capabilities because we're definitely not going backwards in technology. It's just going to get more advanced and there's going to be a lot more technology in daily, daily life. That's the future. It's kind of adopting it now is the best, the best solution. Just kind of, you know, especially when you go into the workplace, it's they're going to be definitely using productivity tools. They're going to be using an array of uh, workflows. So it's kind of good to kind of get, get used to those digital capability requirements of you here and now. So yeah, if I'm a student who is listening to this podcast, I'm thinking, okay, well. It's all well and good in the future, knowing those skills, uh, because they'll help me out with my career. They might help me out with new jobs that don't exist yet. How will they be useful for a student who's studying now? Oh, well, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of like a good question. Obviously, it's a, it's different courses have different requirements. Um, I think the main thing here, I'm going to talk from two perspectives. One is just maybe a student that doesn't necessarily have what we refer to as a media-based assignment. So anything, if you don't have to create a poster or a website or a presentation or anything like that, let's just say a straightforward essay. Like my course, uh, which is law. Uh, exactly. I mean, it's one of those things. You can still incorporate digital literacy and digital media-based assignments into those things. Um, in terms of now, again, those things we run our whole institution is running heavily online and heavily in kind of a lot of um, different digital capabilities are required just to kind of see when your lectures are kind of interact with your academics um figure out uh you know go for tutorials with your lecturers the the, all of those things all of those systems right now that we offer and a lot of it's online and a lot of uh, kind of there's in a way, there's a lot of presumptions that you you know some of this stuff already. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of important for you to kind of adopt 
that because um, you know it's we're kind of again moving a lot more digital in terms of our communications and how we interact generally i mean just this year alone the amount of teams meetings i have had is like crazy and like kind of that building those teams even video call etiquette that kind of all encumbers encumbers i suppose of um of digital capabilities really so Hmm. it's in terms of now you're probably ending up using those skills without knowing it i think i agree i think the biggest thing to drive you to get better at it is you're probably doing things now that are frustrating you because you're not necessarily doing it in the most efficient way possible like try figure out um, the the reason why it will help you and if you look in it a bit more is it will make you do things quicker faster and more efficiently and um, and that just gets comes out with practice over time so it could be um you know figuring out shortcuts on your laptop to do like a certain task so for a typical student then it's like learning how to use Blackboard. When you start, you might have a small tutorial about it, but then you need to develop these digital capabilities whilst at university to help you work out what questions to ask, where could you go for things. Uh, and the same with using Word to make yourself more efficient. Often something that you said about making things faster and whatnot, something that I think about when I think about digital capabilities is doing things that you didn't even know were possible. And yeah. on Word, uh, just clicking buttons like I've done on Word, I found like the A to Z tool that sorts my reference list in the right order. And usually you spend ages copy, writing them out normally, but learning digital skills can help make things faster like that and do things you didn't think were possible. Yeah, exactly. I think one of the things, um, especially it's just kind of like a mindset thing, really. Don't think like, especially for your assignments, don't think that I'm just going to use that one tool just for the assignment. Um, and then that's it. Like what I'd recommend. And this goes for if you, if you are having to create a poster or an essay or anything else, or even display data in an Excel, just mess around with those platforms beforehand. Give yourself half an hour just to kind of explore and understand the technology that you're using. Even if it is word, because you're right. Like there's probably, Tons of buttons in there that you don't know exist and simple things that are like sorting out your reference list. Like that's that's something that will save somebody time. Like if you just spent half an hour messing around and playing with those buttons, that's knowledge that you've then learned from any essay going forward that, oh, don't worry, I'll just sort out my reference list with that button, right? I feel like something I said earlier is really useful for this. It's like you said, if you feel frustrated by things, I feel like with Word and tools like that, they're so well engineered that if you feel frustrated with something, someone else has probably felt frustrated who works at Word and fixed it. So I used to, with my assignments, I used to be frustrated because they used to be really quite long and I had to, you could only view one window at a time of your work. So I had to spend ages scrolling up and down and recently I discovered that there's a button which can open the same document twice called View and then New Window. And you can yeah. have two docu- the same document open at two different places on two different screens or half screens. You know, that's quite, and that's amazing. That's, yeah, that's useful. Um, and, but sometimes with when it comes to inevitably, like just going back to the reference list, those will be things that if you leave it to last minute, you'll be then stressing towards the deadline of sorting out your reference list. And then on top of that, if you're trying to figure out how to quickly sort this out, you might not necessarily know the terminology to google it you know that's that's a yeah. skill in itself going back to why is digital capabilities important for just the normal student it's just like once you start exploring these technologies you'll start knowing the terminology so when it does come to inevitably self help which is the biggest thing i would suggest to learn self help because a it will be quicker in answers b if you um if ever had to email somebody um what a problem is you might send them a question which is not necessarily the right terminology you might confuse the situation they might take some time to get back to you that will take longer if you figure out how to figure out stuff yourself that will save you so much time and you'll learn so much more by doing it i I totally agree Uh, that's what i find i started learning to figure things out myself and at times it can be hard to start but the more your digital capabilities are the more you progress, don't you? And the more you can self help. Um, so, do you think some if some students who are listening to this might think, okay, well, that's great for the people who've developed digital capabilities. Well, what about the people who are 
not very, not haven't got the digital capabilities very well developed yet. Do you think what would you would give advice for them? I think it's a big it's a big pie to kind of tuck into straight away. Don't try not to be overwhelmed by it all. What I'd say is start small. You know, literally look what is required of you right now. Look at your course. Look what is getting recommended or suggested for you to use maybe in your module handbook, maybe from your your lecturers and just take it one step at a time, like really get your head around it. If you have to do record a presentation using Panopto, that's a lecturer capture system that we hear we have here at the university. If it's something like that, just give yourself time to explore that, you know, in a relaxed environment, because the one thing you don't want to do is get panicked by it try work it out in a stressful kind of way. And this inevitably you then will start a bad relationship with that piece of technology. Um, I've seen it plenty of times before. This might be things that people have experienced as well, like in haste, trying to learn something quickly for an assignment and then create some bad experience with it. And then they absolutely hate it and won't go back to it. Yeah. So again, it's, it's all about taking it slow and just kind of really just, you know, if, especially if you're a bit anxious about it, just take it slow, give yourself the right amount of time and whatever it is, just explore it. That's my my biggest uh, advice. I totally agree with all of that, especially the exploring part. But what you were saying about doing things under pressure, um, yeah, don't you probably won't learn things when you do them, when there's so much pressure right. on you. And the same goes for anything, assignments and so on. You won't get to develop things as well as if you give yourself time. With digital capabilities, I think you can learn things best when there's a need to learn that thing. So, for example, if you've given an assignment on a technology that's new to you, you then have to use that. But if you give yourself the time, I think that can be useful. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just thinking about uh, digital capabilities. And one thing that I think are really is really important with it is how it helps some of the other skills that are being success about being successful. So you explained about how it's like a prerequisite to be able to develop things. So what skills do you think learning digital capabilities can help with? All right, so that's that's kind of like a really interesting one. Um, what I'll do is I'll talk about the knock-on effects. Um, just in terms of, um, let's say, creating a poster, just as an example. Yeah. There's plenty of these around. So let's say you get given um, a media-based assignment within your course. So just, just so we know the terminology of a media-based assignment is something like if you got told to create a video or a poster or a website, and you might initially think, why am I doing this? Like, what's what's got, what's the point of this? Well, just in the the assignment itself, and you having to research and build these elements, right? You're essentially working on your communication skills. Think of that in the in the in the utmost kind of way. So, a poster, you're talking now about visual communication and effective uh, communi- communication. Essentially, that's the the cro- the crook of it, crooks of it, even of a lot of the times, um, one of the best skills to have is the ability to effectively communicate. And that kind of blends in, it's quite a, it's a symbiotic relationship with digital uh, capabilities and communication. So just by having to create that poster, let's say you're in the science-based degree, you're creating a poster and presenting that back to your academic or your lecturer and you're thinking, what, what's the point of me designing this poster? Well, you're doing science communication there. You're effectively figuring out how to communicate that piece of science effectively. Um, and you can think about that in lots of different ways. Like, um, again, if you're having to create a video, a lot of what I do, I help kind of teach a range of courses how to create video content using like your mobile device. And some of the ones I've done some amazing courses and really, really kind of interesting stuff like even the nursing degrees there's a range of that where they have to create a marketing campaign for a, for a health campaign even and that kind of messaging going out and you might think well why why do nurses need to why do nurses need to learn how to make videos yes the digital capabilities are part of that right and they'll learn that technology going forward and that will benefit them in the long run mm. but what they're actually learning to do is effectively communicate a specific thing Right. There's lots of initial knock on effects. Um, and that's that's kind of just one example of many that you can kind of com- come across. So I think uh, one thing that maybe sometimes isn't clearly communicated, especially with assignments, is why are we doing this? Um, yeah. 
you know so i think if you ever if you're ever figuring out like if you get given an assignment i mean this goes across the board like even if it's just an essay it's like why am i doing this what will i learn from it what's the what's the point even if you just ask yourself those questions you'll probably work it out but if you're really struggling talk to your lecturer they'll be able to tell you like look by doing this by doing this assignment you're learning x y and z it's it's kind of like part of it so I, again like did i answer the question i can't remember what it was it was Sorry. how does it help in the development of other key skills and i think you uh, answered it sort of by saying about how it has a knock on effect it's like a gateway that once you learn it it will and lo- do things that involve that digital skill over time you will then be able to use that skill to do other things and learn and unlock other skill areas easier yeah, I, kind of going, going going back to that, I know I was talking about effective communication as the, the knock-on skill, but yeah. in terms of creating a poster, that digital capability will then help you next time you want to make a video, for example. That's the next step, kind of, or next step up visually-wise. Um, and it's those kind of, the creativity that kind of all mixes into that and understanding what you can and can't do with each software or um something like that and that, that, that again those abilities to kind of uh, effectively manage um, your creativity within the guidelines ends up um you end up just experimenting really and learning as you go hmm. um that's kind of like the main things really yeah i totally agree the more you were saying about how you learn what software can do and i think that's really important because you don't know what you need software for until you know what it can do and once you've learned that what it can do you can then apply that elsewhere without ever realizing it yeah i I definitely it broadens your horizons i think it broadens your digital horizons if you want to kind of put it in different context i think that what i was saying there overall and what we've come out with there is that it opens up your ability to learning other skills so since we've established that digital capabilities are really important what tips and advice would you have about unlocking those digital capabilities? Um, I think it's kind of, again, it's what I've kind of mentioned before. With I think obviously learning things, what you have in front of you, but if you want to unlock more, I think take a more proactive approach to what's out there. Mm. Uh, look, uh, again, like productivity tools is, is like a, it's such an expanse in itself. Like there's so many different things that work in lots of different ways. And again, you'll find things that you like, you'll find things that you don't like. Um, There's loads of uh, graphic design kind of elements that you can see. Like I really like Canva. Uh, I don't know if you've ever used canva.com. Yeah, that's that's great for making um, like online graphics. Um, You know, you can do presentations, infographics, that type of thing. Explore that, create, create things with that. That will again, help you to communicate, you know, effectively. There's loads of, again, I'm, I'm more media based heavy. There's something like Adobe spark. Hmm. I'd say that's really good one. So if all of these are cloud based, so if you, if you want to kind of get in, kind of have a play around with these, these are free to use. You just, you can just Google them. So canva.com uh, that's, that is in itself. So again, on uh, graphics, um, posters, infographics, there's Adobe Spark, which does um, simple videos as well as it does simple graphics as well as um, an easy one page website. So and again, these are introductory platforms where you can just go on online, explore this. They're free to sign up um, and just explore them and see what you can do with them, because sometimes it's like you might think now, well, I, you know, I, I don't need to make a website. Well, you might you might find an interest in kind of blogging about a specific point of interest that you like, and that in itself might help you get a job in future when employers want to see anything extracurricular that you've done, yeah. and you can just say, "Here's a portfolio of me reviewing, I don't know, a product or a, a tool or something like that," and here's like a, a page that I've done on it, and then here's like a really simple video that I've constructed using this here and. There's lots of areas where doing these type of things can really benefit your uh, job prospects. Yeah. Um, just because you're you're showing more off. Essentially, that's that, that's kind of where we want you all to go anyway. Like all these digital capabilities are prepping you for outside the uni, uh, outside the university as a whole. But I, yeah, there's plenty out there. I totally agree with you. What you're saying about there about like how 
you can learn something on the side extra quick in an extra quick environment and how it can help you in ways you don't even know like if in my opinion i don't uh, when I got this job, there was no requirements of me making video content or podcast content or anything. But And I did a law degree. But in my second year, I started making videos just because I had the software available. So I had a look at it, made some videos, thought, well, this is probably never going to come in useful. But actually, by just learning the skills and learning to make posters, learning to make videos and things like that, just basically, you don't need to make them like an expert. You never know what their skills might do in the future. And yeah. we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now with the podcast series if I hadn't a learn those skills because it's only become an option because we opened up our possibilities and our horizons by learning them so i totally agree with what you're saying yeah exactly and i think it's one of those things where you start learning these techniques to have a bigger megaphone i suppose and kind of getting your messages getting that messaging out um which is it's, it's just kind of all part of it really um and yeah it's just it's just one of those things where you might not necessarily initially see where that skill can be used but you will there might be a a door that opens eventually that you'll go oh actually i remember doing this thing and that could really help here like i know how to make a digital poster or i know how to make a really basic video that will you know inform the rest of the team what to do in this scenario and it's just like you'll be surprised how valuable um those digital capabilities are when it comes to you know, those type of things, because you'll be surprised how many people in business now don't know those skills. Oh, totally. Know? And it's like, if you just had somebody that knew how to just create a quick poster and send it out in the newsletter for the rest of the business, whatever that may be, it would help with that scenario. <laughs> whatever, you know, I'm just kind yeah. of spitballing oh. ideas, but you, you'll be surprised where these, they, they, these kind of the technical capabilities or just capabilities as a whole impact business, you know, it's I'm crazy. Just, I totally agree with you. I know that I've just recently become a trustee for a charity. I say recently, like about a year ago. And yeah. um, like one of the few things that I can properly add, because I'm not overly experienced with a lot of things, is that digital capabilities, that knowledge of how digital things work and the ability to make recommendations, therefore. And I'm not very good at posters, in my opinion. Like, I know how to make a basic one, but people don't. And by being able to make a basic post, you can then use that as a platform to grow if an opportunity comes your way. So developing those basic skills can be really important. What would you say about if someone feels like they know nothing in a skill area? Do you think that it matters if they don't develop to themselves to become an expert? Um, I, I think with how the how it's kind of going now, um, especially with the tools I've suggested, so just, just kind of looking at Canva and Adobe Spark, Those two platforms are specifically designed at people that don't necessarily have a design background, right? This is entry level, just getting the ball rolling and getting you on the, your learning journey. We're kind of always learning in terms of digital capabilities. You're constantly learning Um, in terms of these kind of platforms themselves. They'll just get you on the start of your journey. These are very like, you know, the very beginning, um, Again, if you want to kind of like, in terms of Canva, Canva is a, a more accessible version of like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, a kind of InDesign, all wrapped up into one, really. So if you wanted to take that further past that point, you can then look at those pro platforms, those those kind of um, those packages. So in terms of not having any experience in those areas, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Like, yeah. The platforms are designed specifically to kind of ease you into it. So, again, it's all about building um, a good relationship with the software um, and just kind of taking it slow and exploring it and giving yourself room to make mistakes, giving yourself room to go, I've made a terrible poster. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah. it just takes practice over time. Like, it's one of those things. It's it's just, it's, yeah, just yeah. have a – just accept the fact that it's just going to take some practice um, and just get used to it. That's well, that's kind of it. My first video was awful. My first poster was awful. Yeah, my videos awful. now are pretty okay, I'd say. <laughs> they can get a lot better. And my posters are – they're still pretty bad, but they're better than they were. <laughs> I think, again, it's just like just taking it slow. Like you will learn from experience. Um, the, the, the biggest lesson I've learned – 
just in terms of, um, especially as I've got older, like after I've graduated, after I've got more experience, is the fact that you're constantly learning and you're constantly uh, are trying out new things. And every time you try out a new thing, don't expect it to be amazing the first time. Sometimes it might happen and you might just strike lucky, but don't don't have a bad relationship with failing. I think that's yeah. the – it's quite a, an aggressive the, word, failing. And it's so, just like, yeah, just kind of, you know, just give yourself time. And it's all part of that process. And what I've mentioned before, with giving yourself space – to experiment and play and learn and don't worry next time we'll do it slightly different and it will work better it's, it's that yeah it totally is what so this episode i don't think i've revealed to you the list of the think skills that we've got but um we, we have an episode about freedom to failure is what it's called as well as oh. growth mindset and an episode about reflection because they're all key skills and you just show that digital capabilities links to all those because it does um you learn That's- them through that freedom to failure Freedom to fail. Definitely. I, I think it's like, yeah, it's it's all it's all kind of part of it. So it's important. I've got three more questions for you, Matt, before we start to wrap things up. So the first question is, where can students go to get support with learning these new tools? So if they are finding it difficult to self-learn from the start, where can they go for help? I mean, I, I think whatever it is that you're doing, the first point of call is if you're struggling with something within your course and you're struggling with a certain aspect of it, I would say, first of all, and first and foremost, contact your lecturer. Um, inevitably, if if they've done some sort of digital um, media assignment, they would have probably at some stage talked to our team. So if they can't answer the question, at least they'll be able to point you on to maybe someone in our team if it's like, you know, past that point. Or again, they can kind of give you advice and support. Again, we have IT services. They'll be able to kind of um, point you in the right direction as well. Um, if it's something specifically technical and oh sorry you've got a question i was, I was just gonna say yeah so for people who've got things that are required to learn inside your course there's it support the lecturer they're the yeah. people you take them to so you said also earlier about self-learning a new type of technology so it services and your lecturer probably aren't available if you're learning something brand new yourself so where would you recommend going with those oh i, I think okay so if it's software specific um YouTube is the most underrated learning tool that students potentially look like or see it as. Um, actually, if you're listening to this and you think, actually, I'm a big fan of YouTube and I've learned loads from it, this is I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people that see YouTube as just cat videos. I'm talking <laughs> those that like in terms of YouTube itself, there is it's packed full of uh, tutorials, and then on top of that just look in the comment section of the tutorials to see whether engage um additional you know there's always additional nuggets of information in that so i'd say youtube videos are like the key point to go to first and I that's go for to them. Every, yeah I, like everything and and that's for that's not just for um so in terms of the the learning technology media advisor part of my job that that's also for the associate lecturing within uh, media production so in terms of camera reviews or like learning how to use a specific piece of uh, grip equipment. So like a tripod or whatever, or uh, those type of things it's, you can, you can see the, the amount of tutorials on YouTube that array from specifically digital capabilities, right down to I don't know, crocheting some sort of animal. <laughs> there's, there's full, you can do whatever. It's like there's, yeah. there's so much stuff on there. So that, and then again, it's once you start watching that content, once you start seeing that stuff, it might not initially make sense straight away. But the more you start learning the terminology, the more you can start Googling the stuff yourself. I think that's the main thing is you need to start hearing people talk around that subject. And, and then around that, they'll go, OK, well, what does this word mean? What, does, what do they refer to here? Then you can go off. And that's that's kind of your your research investigative journey i suppose that's yeah. kind of where i would start and you just need to get people talking about the thing so what like, my... like here essentially that's mm. you know just listen to stuff so one of my little tips is when i hear something new like a new buzzword about the technology that i'm using that i've or i read it somewhere i don't know what it means i'll just google it and type the word define before if there's no definition on Google because it's a proper buzzword, I might there might be a other definition on the website, the manufacturer who makes the uh, product uh, as well. 
or yeah, people might I, have to find it. So. Yeah, I, I, again, it's like there's 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 loads of stuff out there, um, and yeah, you're right. Sometimes it does take uh, a slight different. You know, you might just need to reframe how you've Googled it, um, and like put it in a different question. I, I think everyone's guilty of doing this at least a couple of times, writing a really long, convoluted question into Google and just hoping magic <laughs> happens, um, which we've all done. Like, uh, but you know, I think eventually you'll start learning how to break that down in a more effective way. Different type of digital capability. Yeah, that that in itself learning all those you know how to phrase a question that in itself is a skill mm-hmm. um but yeah it, it what in terms of digital capabilities you really do weave in and out of um what i would say is like a physical world skill like learning how to ask a question effective communication and then back into the digital capabilities themselves and how that whole relationship is quite symbiotic well um, you saying about how to phrase a question that applies directly to research. When students do their research, they're just asking after well, they're quite often asking the search provider that they're researching through a question, just like Google. And mm. that ability to ask that question and knowing how the system works to frame your question the best, it's the, it's the same thing. Uh, digital yeah. capabilities in another way. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Can I ask you to talk briefly about the JISC, uh, the JISC discovery tool, please? Uh, yes, yeah, so the Just Discovery tool, um, that's basically a really good way to kind of figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, you, you kind of go on it, there's kind of uh, multiple choice questions. You can like really figure out um, what it is, yeah, where your where your strengths and weaknesses are really. Um, I think the main thing you have to kind of uh, look at it as is um, it's a really good way to kind of Set a site, like set your sights on skills that you kind of uh, want to improve on as well. Um, it asks you a series of questions, um, and again, it just kind of it helps you make sense of your digital skills and supports you to consider like next steps essentially. So, yeah, it's 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 kind of like a think of it as your digital MOT. <laughs> uh, you know, kind of an easy way to think of it. It just it just helps you identify your strengths and weaknesses. Um, so it's very, you know, it's it's worthwhile doing, definitely. So earlier when we were talking about people or students deciding what skills to undertake next, this tool could help with that. Then, yeah, I think so. It's definitely something that kind of gives you like a report at the end that tells you where your strengths and weaknesses are. And sometimes it's like you know you can't necessarily be good at everything. And it's like if you feel like there's a certain area where right now. I think I want to concentrate on a different area because again, there's there's just so much. Again, talking about that giant pie that you, the giant digital pie that you have to consume, and um, taking it one step at a time. You don't have to try and do it all at one time because if you try and take on too much, inevitably you won't learn as much. You'll forget the information. It's like just just take it slow and just kind of evaluate it and figure out. Okay, well from this report, I want to kind of these are the next steps that I think are the most effective for me to kind of address. Hmm. I try and focus on like one skill at a time. Uh, <laughs> it was videos, it was posters, I, trying different softwares and one at a time going for it. Although you can do differently. It depends on how you work best. Yeah. So Matt, what advice do you have for any student who wants to be successful? My main advice for anyone that wants to be successful is have a learning growth mindset constantly take everything that you're doing as i'm constantly learning there's at no point you're ever gonna complete and learn everything there's at no point where you're gonna go i know everything right and this is in any field if you want to be successful is just learn every day and that doesn't necessarily need to be anything specifically to do with your course or your interests and i'm just saying like just constantly learn things if it's like if you if you want to learn how to garden if you want to learn how to do something creative or paint if you want to learn something really technical or if you want to just generally um read and get interest in a certain other area and just constantly learn stuff and again it just because that kind of then trains your brain to 
learn in the areas of your profession as well. So just learn. That's my main takeaway point is just learn and constantly learn and never think that you've learned enough. Yeah. You know, the same goes just to relate that back to the capabilities for a second. I'm just thinking it just, um, the same goes for digital software as well. Don't, if you feel like you've learned the software totally or your peak, you never need to improve word again in a few years, that knowledge that you have now be updated. So just keep updating yourself. Don't feel like you need to just learn the old version. Just keep trying to learn what's new and keep updating yourself and refreshing. Yeah, definitely. Like hundred percent. If you are interested in learning further about Matt's advice, by the way, um, there is going to be an episode in this podcast series about growth mindsets where I'm interviewing Dr. Fiona Shelton about it. So if that is out yet, you'll see a link in the description of this video. There are also links to every single piece of software that Matt has discussed in this video, as well as also to the JISC uh, discovery tool. So Matt, is there anything else that you'd like to add about digital capabilities that you want to say that you haven't said so far? I think in terms of in terms of digital capabilities as a whole, I think my final message, just to kind of summarize my my key takeaway points, is take it take it slow if you're anxious about it, build a better relationship with them, and then give yourself give yourself time to explore and just learn and take it one step at a time um, and just try out new things and don't be scared to try out new things and don't be scared to fail either with them. Um, it will benefit you in the long run. I promise it might be frustrating to start out with. If you ever start feeling like this is the worst thing in the world, uh, just take a break, walk out, walk outside, go for a walk for half an hour and then come back to it and just take it slow. It becomes more stressful when you try learn a new digital capability for something that's very important for you to do. For example, if you got given an assignment to create a video, don't try and learn how to use the software while doing your final assignment. It's like practice on something else first because that's so much less stressful. You'll feel a lot better about something technically or it might glitch for example or something might happen where you go oh uh, now i've got i figured out that this the software whatever what i'm doing breaks at this certain point i've got enough time in a relaxed way to figure out what the problem is and get it sorted so that's my main takeaway message i couldn't say about myself uh, thank you matt for your time being interviewed for this uh, podcast no i really appreciate it I really enjoyed speaking with Matt about digital capabilities today. I feel like I've learned a lot from it, so I really hope that you have too. I feel that I now have a better understanding of what digital capabilities actually are. In my understanding, they include more than just learning how to use apps more effectively, although that is certainly something that I'd recommend spending some time on. Developing digital capabilities means learning a set of transferable skills that allow you to learn and master different software. So if you're learning a new app, you can pick it up with less of a challenge. If you are completing an assignment, you can find ways that make you work quicker and remove any frustrations or annoyances that are in the process. If something goes wrong, you can learn to self-diagnose and solve the problem. Digital capabilities are so useful. I think some of the key takeaway points from today's episode are, first, to explore the apps that you already use. Have a play around with them and don't be afraid of clicking a button to see what it does. Don't be afraid of something going wrong when you click that button. This is definitely easier when you practice outside of an assessment. The second takeaway point is to broaden your horizons and see what other useful apps or tools that are out there that can help you to increase your skills. If you learn skills in new digital softwares and learn them at a basic level through tasks like making posters or videos, you can really increase your skill set and make yourself stand out. Finally, anyone can gain and develop digital capabilities at any level. The key is to take time out and spend it on learning and developing in an environment where there is no pressure. To highlight this point and the second point as well, I have included the first video that I created in the description of the YouTube version of this podcast. And this can be found on the Derby Uni Library YouTube channel. When I made this video, I was really proud of it, and I still am proud that I made this video. But when I look back on it, there are loads of ways that I could improve it and I would change quite a lot of it. But it doesn't stop me from realising that that video was a step. 
and although it wasn't a great video, by reflecting and improving my digital skills over time, I have now developed to a point where I can make good quality videos. Learning skills is a journey, so don't be afraid to start a new journey with a new app or a new piece of software. At the end of our interview today, Matt mentioned about how having a growth mindset is, he, is his key piece of advice for being successful as a student. In the next two episodes of the podcast series, we focus on what a growth mindset is and how you can develop it. These episodes will release on Monday the 29th of March and on Monday the 5th of April. I would highly recommend giving them a listen as I learned lots from those interviews and found them to be so insightful. I really do hope though that you enjoyed this episode of the Success of the Student podcast. In the description of the YouTube version of this podcast, I've added some useful links, other relevant resources and other episodes that particularly link to this one. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.